Speaking speaking of a club that has a ton of money, let's go over to Liga really quick and talk about PSG away from home at saint Antienne. They were down 1-0 in this game, but came back with three goals. Messi had three assists and, and some very good assists. That's first. Second, it just felt really weird, everyone. Sergio Ramos made his first ever start. And it just felt weird to see him high five Messi after like, after a goal. Like, what is happening? This is a parallel universe. What were your thoughts about those two guys? I mean, we we could envision it when they first made the move to PSG, but this is the first time that we actually saw it happen. Those two, well, rivals for so long that would always get into it. And Ramos, I don't know how many swipes he, he free swipes he took at Messi over the years with Barcelona and Real Madrid games, but now they're friends. <laughs> so yeah. that feels a little weird. How are you feeling about it? Well, one, it just reminds us of just how big uh, that rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid was at its peak and how much those players truly hated each other. And I still think that's the case now, but we're in just a different era of La Liga that it's a little bit different. But I never would have thought, you know, I, I when I envision it, I, I, I think about Messi scoring and wanting to run to Ramos and Ramos running to run over or scores his goal and they don't know, like, are we fist bumping, high five, we <laughs> hug, and it's like the awkward, awkward like you haven't seen grandma in a couple of years now and you don't know what's going to happen. Like, does she give you the little hug or the big squeeze? <laughs> uh, but no, it's 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 amazing amazing thing to see and obviously the evolution of that relationship is is pretty cool. And one that I think, while we laugh about it and joke about the fact that they're they're on the field together, probably one of the most important relationships in making this team a formidable team in Europe mm-hmm. this season mm-hmm. is going to be one, the respect that Messi shows Ramos and allows Ramos to say, hey, I might scream at you a couple of times or I might have to yell at you. I might have to go hard on a few of these players and I need you to back me up and know that this is for the best of the team because defensively, we're crap. And that's not just the back line. We're just, as a unit, very, very poor for what we for what we could be. We rely too heavily on stars to, to, to win, win us games. And I feel like that the building of that relationship is going to be really important for, for Ramos to be on the field and say, hey, this is now my team. You know, you guys are the stars, but this is my team and I've got a job to do. So I hope that you respect that. And I think, again, them being on the field more, them having an understanding or them having a friendship or whatever we want to call it Mm -hmm. is probably one of, if not the most important factor in building this PSG team this season. Yeah, that's a a great shout. And I like uh, your opinion on that one. Natalie Cross has got a question. Can we talk about Neymar's latest injury? I like that segue. Thank you for that, Natalie. Is losing him actually a good thing for PSG? That's a tough, tough question because I feel like if we, if PSG are going to really build the rapport that they need, not necessarily to, to win Liga, they got a 12-point lead already after 15 games. They're cruising in Liga, but, but in Europe, they need all three of those guys on the field at the same time, in my humble opinion, and it would be hard to leave one of them off if they're healthy and sit them on the bench. I'm just, just to throw that out there. Neymar did have, uh, it was a tackle that wasn't that bad of a tackle, but when he goes to step down to jump out of the way, his, his ankle gets pinched. Heath and I have most likely done that in our careers. My hands are sweating. Know. Anytime you say it, my hands start sweating. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it's really Angle hard to know how, how severe he's, you know, his ligaments and, and everything. It didn't look like a break, but it could be, I could see like a four to six weeker. When I say that, before I get your thoughts, Heath, the next four to six weeks are pretty significant for PSG. They have Nice, who are doing very well. Uh, they're in the top top three in, in Liga. Lance, who's in fifth. Then they got Club Brugge, a match day six in the Champions League. Just got to see that one out. And then they got Monaco. So so the next month is, the next three weeks really are, are pretty difficult. I do though think it's an opportunity for somebody else to step up and maybe find a better balance. Though I feel like Di Maria is the obvious choice to fill in. And he is arguably a superstar in his own right. He just has to share the limelight with, you know, five, six other guys that might be considered a little bit better. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a loaded question in terms of like, are the, is it better for them? Just because, you know, the answer, as we talked about before, it's it's hard to imagine a team being better without the best players in the world playing together mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. the field. However, I think it's a good problem to have because now, like you said, you can actually go with a little bit more of a balance and think through it a little bit differently if you're Pochettino. You're able to start like looking at this through a different lens, right? You're, you're no longer forced to be like, okay, well, those are the three and now we've got to figure out what we do next. And also when he does come back, you're going to work him back in. Let's not forget that like Neymar misses, I don't know, 20, 15 games a year uh, due to injury. This is a very common thing. And now you have more players on the field and it could create a little bit balance where like we talked about earlier on in the year, it would actually be best case scenario if Messi and, and Neymar we're rotating games. You play plenty of games or you're saving yeah. them. You're balancing. Imagine, them imagine that. <laughs> yeah. High five. You want to see a high five of them coming on and off. You know, 
Sergio Ramos doing a three-way high five with all of them being like, guys, we're all having fun. Don't be mad that you're getting subbed off at halftime. <laughs> but no, I think, I think there is an opportunity for balance here. And you say four to six weeks and obviously we're speculating. I'm it guessing. Shorter, yeah. could be longer. Yeah, okay. But then when you work them back in, you can get, get a half out of them or maybe it's 60 minutes or, or whatever it is. And maybe by then you've got a little bit clearer of a picture of your team. And again, I don't know if that's actually going to be the case. I don't know him being out. It's going to solve, again, some of the problems that PSG have in terms of being cohesive or being a better, quote unquote, team. Uh, but it certainly makes it, I think, a little bit easier in terms of squad selection and building a little more balance.